Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, the folks at Pixel Logic has unveiled a 2021.5 update that should be coming over to ZBrush. Now, this announcement or, you know, these new features and updates, they were revealed during the ZBrush 2020 Summit. Now, some of these features include the tick skin, which is actually one of the major things that they dwelled on as they talked about it. And the whole idea about this is it's a brand new system that mimics the softening of surface layers based off how you work when you're modeling with an oil based clay so once you're working with an oil based clay and you know you come to heat it up there is actually a way that this responds to how details slide across and around it and that is the main idea for this so this doesn't add to the mesh all it simply does is it slides across the mesh surface to give some very cool deformation now these deformations can be used for things like wrinkles and you can actually use it to add things like folds and also scales to characters. Now, something else which is also very interesting about this brand new system is that it works with all the brushes that exist in ZBrush. So if you would like to use the dynamic brushes, like the cloak brushes, or maybe you would like to use any of the brushes or the alphas that exist in ZBrush, yes, you can. So the idea here as well is this doesn't add or reduce once you're sculpting with it. All you can do is you simply work based off the same plateau that you've set when you were turning on the tick skin and this brings us to talk about the fact that there's a small setting that exists within the tool menu once you want to start working with this so you can choose to turn this on you can turn it off you can actually increase or reduce the level at which the tick skin is going to be used to sculpt within your model now there is also support for additive and subtractive sculpting but at the same time it only works based off the same plateau that you've set or the same level that you've set previously so in case you want to add details you want to wrinkle stuff yes you will be able to use this one to do some very cool stuff so this brings us to talk about a brand new deformer that has also been added now this brand new deformer is known as the contrast as this actually controls surface detail and you can use this to increase reduce and adjust details on your model globally this is very important especially if you're into 3d printing models you would definitely find this one very useful as sometimes you would like to increase the details and instead of going one after the other trying to push and pull things you can use the contrast slider right now and increase the surface details on your model and while we are talking about surface details and stuff that you can do there is now a brand new alt smooth brush that will be coming so the smooth alt brush or alt smooth brush will actually help you when you're smoothing things so contrary to what we have right now which is the smooth brush which simply you know once you start smoothing it kind of creates artifacts this one will actually smooth your model gently and leave little or no artifact actually there is a work around that so just in case you want to find out how to access this because it's actually something that exists in zbrush but a lot of people probably don't know how to do this so once you hold down shift to start smoothing before you click to start smoothing or you know use your pen to start smoothing you can literally hold down shift and take your hands off shift and simply use the brush so this one is better that this is coming in as a brush itself so it's going to help a lot of people to get better cleaner and nicer smoothing across their geometry now we also have a very cool stuff that is also going to be coming with the new release and this has to also do with the BPR filter now the new BPR filter that we'll be getting is a spotlight feature now this is to mimic the idea of you know you being able to display your model like it is in an art gallery and the beautiful thing with bprs is that they are all instantaneous and since they are post-process effects that you can add onto your model it's easier for you to control things like in terms of the new feature which is the spotlight that will be coming you'll be able to control the intensity control how wide it's going to be and a couple of other things like colors and so on and so forth and with that said, let's also talk about the new preview AO feature for the viewport. Now, this one is very interesting because most times when you're sculpting your model, you would like to see some surface level crevices. Uh, maybe you want to see some height or you want to see some details. You really want to see some things and make some very good decision in terms of details and all that stuff. So with a feature like this right now, it's going to be even way better for you to make those decisions while you're sculpting. And instead of going over to your you know, BPR setting and turning on AO and cranking all the things all the way up, right now you can preview these things in real time 
even when you add effects to them. And while we're looking at things that you can also work with in real time, Sculptris Pro is getting a bit of a lift off. Previously, before now, when working with Sculptris Pro, you can't work in a solo mode. But right now, Sculptris Pro is going to be supporting solo sculpting. So at this point, when you want to solo things or you want to cut certain parts out and you want to work with them with the Sculptris Pro brush turned on, yes you will be able to do that and for modeling there is also some updates to the z modeling tools as you can now easily slice and with this slicing tool you can easily slice across various parts you can slice across vertices you can slice across edges and at the same time you can slice across faces now with the whole slicing feature you can actually use this to create some very interesting looking shape and the slicing is not the only thing that is actually coming with this as you can also get the creasing feature that can crease shortest distance and you can also use this to crease certain parts convert those parts to polygroup extrude those parts if you must and you can use this for a lot of use cases so normally to create things like this might take you two to three different kinds of clicks but with a feature like this coming to the z modeling tool of course it's going to take you just a couple of slices across to create this so contrary to using things like you know the live boolean create a shape for that then create another shape and start boolean things you will be able to use this feature to do some very very nice stuff in addition to things that is also coming there used to be a very lovely script now in case you have no idea for this script i'm going to put a link in the description where you can check this one out and this used to be the curve helper script now the idea for the curve helper script is for persons who would like to convert their z spheres to curve lines and then use those curve lines and actually drive various curves so right now this has now been integrated into zbrush as you can now easily convert z spheres to curves and you can literally use those things to create things like rope and also other forms of curves. So with this said, let's talk about something else that you guys might probably need to know. And this has to do with some third party applications and also third party tools that will be supported with the new updates that will be coming to ZBrush. And that is the fact that ZBrush now officially supports Space Mouse. And this is a tool or this is, you know, an accessory or should I call it a gadget that is made available by the folks at 3D Connection. So with this now, you can fly through your entire ZBrush scene. You can use this as, you know, a secondary tool to tumble across several stuff. And this is very, very nice. I can't wait to get my hands on that. Something else which is also very cool is that licenses for Keyshot Bridge is now cross-platform. So in case you own a license for Keyshot Bridge from ZBrush, which is for Mac, you can now use that on Windows. And at the same time, you can use that across different platforms as well. So these are some very cool updates and of course I'm very excited about some of the features I still did not get to see you know the whole UV in feature that has been teased like two years ago I'm still expectant to see things like that and it's very cool to see that they are adding some more useful brushes that can you know that you can use to make certain things better and also work faster I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can find the script and of course, if you would like to get ZBrush, you can also go over to Pixelogic, get a 30 days trial if you must, and you can also get the ZBrush Core Mini for free. So tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, Friday tutorial Tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace